Hey everyone, this is Tihashi and welcome back to our Battletech gameplay commentary. Um, probably just going to jump right into uh, our Benefactor story mission. Um, in this mission, we will be talking about uh, the Shadowhawk. Okay, uh, so this is Anna Maria Centrella. This is our, um, one of our major supporting characters. She's going to tie us back to Lady Arano here down the road. skeptical for now. She plays her deal we can't refuse card, but um, it's a universal win for us because that big, beautiful boat is what we're going to get our hands on, and it's going to make this entire thing possible. And basically, the existence of that, uh, what we'll, we'll call a hero ship, is what generally makes this game much better to play, much be a much better mercenary company to run in comparison to. MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries, where you're stuck with a leopard for all of history. Uh, enjoy. Uh, obviously, they can't just hand you over a like, Union-class dropship at some point. But... Um, but yeah. They could have they could have done something like this. Like, the creators of this game basically, you know, came up with uh, what is essentially a colony vessel and it's not a warship um, though it does have mech bays it does have maintenance bays it has living quarters you can customize it you feel like not only are you building a, a mercenary company you're building a home uh, way beyond the confines of this uh, this leopard where you can literally see space out of both sides of it because it's it's so tiny right so we're gonna jump on this uh opportunity to get our butts saved Just check our mech bay really quick. Make sure. I mean, we got stuff in process, but that's okay. Um, we could snag this uh, house merit travel contract really quick. And I think we will, we'll do them both. So if that bothers some folks, uh, I do apologize. One out of seven, two out of 11, pretty disappointing in terms of salvage. It's also half a skull. Hmm. We'll 
we'll we'll spring for the two out of nine and hope we're not making a huge mistakey by doing that. I guess I've gone leaning heavily, more heavily into the salvage also than I said I would. I pretty much uh, espoused the virtues of going for cash early in the game and switching to salvage later, but salvage is just uh, just real good. Uh, we've got the money. 20 grand is nothing in this universe, so we'll, we'll prefer, prepare to take that hit. Also, the, the banks are essentially a non-actor in the game, so our magic powers of super hindsight, uh, we already know that we'll face no consequences. other thing is interestingly enough the color scheme of the leopard in this game fits your company and it does not change in mech warrior 5 mercenaries despite the fact that it's that leopard that you're stuck with for the entire game so just airing a couple of grievances there i would say like at least if we're stuck with the leopard make it feel like that's where we live and work every day of our lives instead of uh the sort of uh, sort of sterile thing. I think we can just jump into the contract and we'll get the spider out again. Okay, loading screens, hopes and dreams, right? Um, I think last time we were on here, we were talking about the environment a little bit. Um, I'm definitely not an environmentalist activist, but um, I do love the planet that I live on and most of the people in it, in fact. And so uh, hopes and dreams. I really do hope that we can form stronger international coalitions since climate is an international problem and it can't be solved locally unfortunately uh, it's going to take a human effort to really get that under control so that's our hope our hopes and dreams mm. i thought i put the spider back in but we got the locust I must have done that wrong, but it doesn't matter because if the locust breaks on this mission, we can have the spider on the campaign mission and we'll have a chance to fix everything anyway, most properly. So here's the blackjack. Maybe out on this cropping, outcropping or up on this hill would be a good place for it. For right now, we're still looking for the bad guys, kind of. So we'll just run up here. So to turn our focus to the Shadowhawk, um, I mentioned previously that it's uh, in this game it's pretty great in melee combat. Unfortunately, it doesn't really field any short range guns, but uh, just an incentive or a consideration if you find yourself running out of ammo in the thing or in close combat because uh, his damage profile actually isn't that great especially at close range um, and so you might go uh, well if I can't do uh, more damage with my pitiful SRMs which we'll get rid of eventually why not just punch them in the face and it works, works well with the Shadowhawk. Shadowhawk also has the mobility to be an active participant in short range combat. 
So we're going to be stupid brave with our locust. Um, no, we're going to be cowards. And by cowards, I mean we're still going to run straight at them, but we're going to sprint and not shoot. So we're up against another locust, but um, lucky for us, the uh, scorpion and the striker are sitting perfectly still and... Or they were. Haha, <laughs> everyone laughed now because I was dumb and wrong. Um, am I shooting? Boy, I thought I'd waited them out. But uh, anyway, doesn't matter. We've got interesting new vehicles in here that I don't recognize, like this Narc Carrier and the Scorpion Mark II. Um, so it looks like they added some more vehicles to the game, which is cool. Too bad you can't use vehicles in the game, um, but it's not a surprise. It's about giant robots. Why would you want a car? All right. I'm a lot more interested in destroying that scorpion, but it's, I mean, those are pretty long shots. Yeah, and she shot wide with both of them, it looks like. 280% shots, didn't hit either of them. Sixty-five, eighty-five, eighty-five. Um still pretty determined to keep shooting at scorpions. There we go. Auto cannon fives uh, in the early game. Don't ignore them. It would they will knock pieces off of that that locust. And I'm pretty sure we we basically need to do a jump to get any kind of decent shot. Let's see what we've got against this seventy sixty five, and then we're in the greens for the narc. We'll probably, it's the responsible thing to do, shoot at that, so we'll try and kill it instead. Yeah. So, decent opening salvo. Obviously not as good as we want, but um, we'll see. I'm at anticipating a melee attack? No. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter, my friend. Uh, that was a complete waste. Go hit the broad side of this tank. This is a great thing to do with your light mechs in the early games. Have them step on stuff. Especially the locust or the uh, the spider that mounts machine guns. Only disappointing thing about that whole exchange is we didn't get the kill. But we're going to get to do cool glitch things that glitch is great at right here, which is uh, split our fire. We're just going to uh, stick one um, medium laser on B to wipe some of that evasion off of there. Yep. Doesn't matter that we missed. We're just trying to make the Locust easier to hit for everyone else. And then we'll take our Shadow Hawk in. Again, the Shadow Hawk is mostly there to wipe off evasion. Its damage profile just isn't great. The This is the 2H model, and it's even, even when you invest into it and baby it a little bit, it's just pretty, pretty bad. Um, there is the 2D in this game, um, and that's a that's a very solid variant of Shadowhawk. You can put the put the 2D in. It's got more hard points. You can give it a better short range or long range profile with either SRMs or LRM5s, um, and it can you know win fights. Uh, and deal damage. A 
where it's like the the two H is just like the venerated like pre Omni mech, right? Uh, I say it like that because it's it tries to be an Omni mech that can't mount any weapon at once, so it's got just one of every range profile, which is terrible. Don't do that, kids. Okay, this guy is uh, unstable. We're going to have to force him to make some crazy decisions. Like taking a shot at the Shadowhawk. Crazy decision. Uh, anyway. We'll go for the kill here. What we're probably going to do is turn... Oh, we could just leave the... We'll look at our heat, but we just turn the auto cannons off if we're too hot. No, we can we can fire all that stuff. And then we're going to um, go for a leg shot. And we hit the head. It's kind of whatever with the locust. Either you hit its head once and the pilot dies and everyone dies and it's all very sad, or it just doesn't matter. We could do DFA, which would be funny, but we're not going to. We're doing. We're going to do small laser stuff. Pretty sure that's the end of that mission. I'm pretty happy about my salvage decision because honestly, what are we going to pull off of that mission that's going to be useful in our future? Took almost no damage. Slice of the Locust. And uh, Auto Cannon 5. Usually you want to take the Auto Cannon 10s because they're worth so much more money. Uh, auto, or sorry, uh, LRM 10s. And I think that's what we're going to do. And we got ammo. Got the narc ammo, which is cool. Maybe we'll build a, star, uh, a um, scout mech to drop narcs on people. We were experimenting, um, my buddies and I, with the narc on MechWare 5. And... Um, limited success mostly because it was our first time using it but our missile boat was happy enough to to drop it or to have it dropped okay so we got more stuff we can do which is exciting Another two out of nine. It's a cold planet. This is against the magistracy, though, so we probably uh, won't take that contract. You already start, since they're your very first employers, yeah, these guys, these guys are fighting them as well. Since they're very, your very first um, employers, uh, you start with a little bit higher rep with them and you might as well leave that be i like this system like we didn't take any armor damage um or we didn't take any like structure damage or lose any weapons so the mechs are just good to go they in this game they slap slap new armor on there and they say get in there and it doesn't take any time so but we'll go ahead and take this campaign mission and we'll talk a little bit more about the Shadowhawk um, even in MechWarrior 5 there's not much not much length you can push the Shadowhawk it's got some weird variants like one has like a PPC and an LRM-10 I think if I remember that right that thing is terrible it's basically a griffin like oh it's got a PPC and an LRM launcher the only thing about 
like the griffin is it's on the same arm and torso is the same side of the mech so you take out that torso and the mech is useless at least on the shadow hawk it's on two different sides of the mech but that's still a terrible loadout um and the lore griffins are very popular and there are definitely decent variants of griffin like the shadow league era griffin with uh two missile slots and the ppc is much better than its counterpart um Especially in MechWarrior 5, it's got the Guardian ECM on it. Um, uh, the Pirate Shadowhawk is okay. The Pirate Weapons in general, I think, are a very interesting idea. Um, and... It is, it is cool. Uh that they added this sort of like um like the rifles the chemical lasers stuff like that um we'll stop our complaining and we'll get ready to get the argo Grim Civil, if I remember, has a um, quick draw. We'll talk about the quick draw later. But it's a heavy mech, 60 tons, and our first heavy mech fight. Ironic that we we're talking about light battle mech activity, and we know we're going to fight a heavy mech. Uh, never heard of her. Sure. Intel. Lady Death, she's connected to the wider Battletech lore, Pirate Queen. Okay. So let's just push on. We're not going to do the battle tech or the battle mech intel because we already know what we're up against. Pretty sure this uh, also introduces Dr. Maraud, which is a cool, uh, cool character. Uh, I think she's from the Free Worlds League, but I don't really remember. And she becomes a member of our crew, despite uh, she also being a servant of the Magistracy. She, over time, gains more loyalty uh, towards us. Okay, let's take these guys and switch them around, restore our jump capability, which will come in handy, especially for our Vindicator. Um, I still haven't really switched around our loadout, and we'll probably, probably get into that more later. For right now, it's, it's done all right. Because like there's some small uh, tweaks you can do that are smart. Uh, dropping the Vindicator's small laser, giving it another heat sink, stuff like that. Oh, loading screens, hopes and dreams. Um, what else has been going? Okay. Uh, also in the news, uh, Activision Blizzard, a big vid video game development company, had a real nasty um, sexual harassment suit. Um, employee walkout uh, uh, lost their leader, uh, J. Allen Brack, one of the original founders. And uh, uh, good, don't abuse your workforce. More heads should roll from that, definitely.
Okay. Giving us some valuable intel on what we're supposed to be doing here. And uh, yeah, kill turret generators. Good advice. Not just for this game, but for life in general. Uh, typically, so Glitch for right now needs direct fire, and so we're pretty much going to pilot her front and center, where these other guys were going to break right a little bit. Here's one of the turrets we need to blow up. stay close to the rim of that crater so we can jump up on it if we want to. This Vindicator is also slower. I'm a bigger fan of the uh, Avenging Angels, though it wasn't that successful a design, but um, we'll, we'll get to that when we talk about the Vindicator. So I think we might use our power of flight. It is funny that that guy says that we're in giant battle mechs where it's like, uh, you know, Shadowhawk is pretty tall. Okay, well, maybe to, it also has short range guns on it. Maybe to save us the trouble, we will plank away at this uh, light laser turret. Oh, she's got line of sight on the tower. We're going to save that for a minute, though, and get our uh, defensive advantage taken care of. Pew, pew. There we go. And I think for these guys, we can continue this uh, sprint and just close, uh, keep closing. Just blip you around there. Sprint, please. Miss the spider. That's what we want to see. Okay, so let's reserve one turn. Uh, especially uh, if you've uh, done some sprinting and you've got a lot of uh, evasion saved up, it's good to reserve a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about the Auto Cannon 5. Um, so there are some mechs that have autocannon fives that should and some that shouldn't. And the Shadowhawk is definitely one of the mechs that features an autocannon five and should definitely have an autocannon five to feature. Um, sorry, we're gonna go wave our butts at these guys. Um, the reason for that is it's mounted on a torso, especially in this game, a little bit different in MechWarrior 5. Um, Auto cannons on the arms are typically better, but um, but yeah, you get an auto cannon five on the torso. It's uh, hard to destroy. It's easy to protect uh, the gun and its ammunition, um, and that's all. That's all great. Um, it's also on a mech that can move pretty fast. Uh, 
is jump capable, can stay out of trouble. All all big advantages on the Shadow Hawk. Let's compare it uh, to a mech that should not have um, uh, an auto cannon five on it. Um, mainly the Jaeger mech or Jaeger mech, uh, however you want to say it. Uh, both seem to be common enough. Um, the reason why it's so terrible on the Jaeger mech is uh, Jaeger mech has a serious uh, armor problem in general, but uh, even more so than that, uh, that stuff is on that stuff is on the arms. Both both of its primary weapon systems, AC5s and AC2s, are on the arms, and so um, to have that. To have that happen is uh, a big risk, at least, because whenever those weapon systems go down, you look very dumb. You look so dumb when you lose an arm on a Jaeger mech, and um, when you can very easily take those AC5s off, uh, downsize them to AC2s and the mech already gets much better. You also only need to carry one ammo type, uh, another huge advantage to doing that. Thank you, Glitch, you are my hero. Let's go see if we can't stop stomp on this guy's face. Actually, eh, 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 fine. We're gonna still do it because uh, we need to shed heat as well. All right, that's what we like to see. Plus, it's our commander. He would he would have missed anyway, right? Uh, another mech that uh, vastly benefits from having an auto cannon five on it is the um, the Centurion, right? Centurion's got an AC ten on its arm and. Uh, if you know anything about the Centurion, uh, that thing falls off all the time. Like even even in the lore, is it just like doesn't feed, it breaks, it falls off. It's terrible. Uh, replace it with an AC5. Um, your uh, it's for one thing, its loss isn't nearly such a big deal. Sorry, got to do a little bit of math in my head. All right, looks like our math was good. But anyway, we'll have a Centurion eventually and we'll talk a little bit more about it because uh, being a proper nerd and gamer, I got strong opinions about everything, including the Centurion. Pew. That was a miss. Uh, glitch is right. We're just going to reserve. I don't, I'm pretty sure our defenses, or at least outer defenses, are more or less wiped out. You know, someone's taken a swing at us. It's a vehicle, I think. We'll send um, Behemoth to go smash that thing because she's in the Shadow Hawk and it's faster than the other two 45s that we got on the field. We, we've got Resolve saved up. I don't think I need it for the shot. Yeah, no. But yeah, similar to the Hunchback, the Shadowhawk sort of has the mech built around a gun feel, uh, which I like. Uh, obviously, the Hunchback is also very charismatic, but it's also like the uh, like the Shadowhawk. It can kind of get away with having a bigger gun because it's on the torso, and that makes sense. Let's try and not miss our shot this time. Thank you, Decker. 
and I would like to give Glitch an opportunity to cool down a little bit. Though we're going to have to sprint to this gate, and it's we'll, we'll be at zero heat anyway. Round off this attack. Alright, A guns are down. Basically doing a beachhead mission. Okay, we're gonna have our scout mech continue doing scout mech -y things. And we can sprint with the blackjack as well because it doesn't have indirect fire. But if um, our LRM carriers end up going a little bit slower, we can still shoot with them. But this is good. This is I like the symbol. I don't remember seeing it before, so maybe they added some stuff. Uh, I checked a while back, and they said that they were no longer adding content to this game, which is fair. Like, it's better than the games that are just in development forever, even after they've like had a beta and had like their they're on sale and literally behaving like normal video games. Uh, so like these guys, you know, took their risks, but the risks were smart risks. They had their season pass, they had their content come out. Um, and when the thing was over, it was over and that's okay. You can have a complete game. And this is a good example. Like it's a mostly single player game and um, all of its single player systems are well established, well fleshed out, and don't really need any more, any more attached to them. That's okay. Okay, we need everyone in the circle. This is a thing, uh, I'd actually be curious to hear you, you, you folks' opinion on this, because in MechWarrior 5, all you need is one unit to enter the circle, and in this one you need all of them, but you also control all of them, where in MechWarrior 5, um, you only control one unit, even if uh, one of your units has an allied player in the cockpit, you still only control that one. So be interesting i'd be interested to hear what you think is better to have uh for this game if only one unit needed to enter the circle to progress because i like that tactically because you can set up ambushes and not be in an ambush every single time you have to stand in the circle but maybe that's bad for the narrative of the game so We'll get some evasion built up and still be in the circle like good kids. So we get Behemoth up here. Um, this is so. This is typically where. Uh, okay, here we go. This is typically where the blackjack gets torn up, even more so than the. Uh, than the shadow hawk or any other mech um so we're gonna see what happens Uh, sorry, I'm pretty leery about getting my spider all the way up there to face down those big mechs on its own. Because even, uh, even a nasty melee attack could really, could really cause issue. Alright, here's Dr. Mrod. She also gets voice lines. Here's a commando. We're going to reserve. Let them get their shots in. There's a Jenner. I'm a big fan of this light mech in both games. It's better in this game than, than in MechWarrior 5. Just because it's so much easier to hit your shots and smash light mechs into the ground. And punish them for being light mechs. 
silly, silly, stupid light mech players. Um, but uh, here, the scout mech gameplay is a lot cooler, a lot friendlier. So I think... I mean, we can afford the heat because we're not going to be spending too much time. Can we jump up on this thing? We can. We can do all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, we're not going to be spending too much time shooting with the spider. More, we're going to get try. Uh, we're going to try and get units to either split up or turn around. We're gonna get the sensor lock and wipe his evasion off. The locust seems uh, the most realistic because it's damaged, um, and it's already a pretty frail mech. So can we get a direct line of fire on it? Even if we can't, it's not the end of the world, but it would be nice if we could. So we'll just... I mean, it doesn't even matter if we jump with the Shadowhawk. Like, there's... There's just no overheating it. Okay. And now it's our chance to get our free shots in. He's going to get his free shots in. Oh, he didn't take a shot. Interesting. I wonder why. Looks like even with the uh, vaunted uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi high ground we can't get a direct shot so I think we'll move up to preserve our heat on the Vindicator nothing too impressive happening just yet I think we'll sprint, please. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Here comes the commando. He's going to try and be a hero. He developed no evasion. Our spider still has a lot, so we'll continue to reserve. Yeah, they're not even bothering to shoot at the spider, which is what we want. Uh, let's just reserve again. These vehicles have to make their play, so we'll just wait, wait for them. All right, they're shooting up the Shadowhawk. Not that surprising. It has pretty low evasion at this point, too. Is that on an arm where that structure was exposed? I'm surprised those shots are getting through, honestly. Arm and torso. Hmm. Got too ballsy, maybe. Uh, this is all three evasion anyway. I think we'll just... We'll just go for it. When that quick draw comes out, we're probably going to have to withdraw. That's kind of a pun, right? There we go. That's what we like to see. 
Um, obviously knocking out units gives you resolve. So if you can spend resolve on the turn, you're right about to knock a unit out. Uh, it's a good trade. It looks like I can't make a move to get eyes on that commando. Oh, it's because I'm dumb. There we go. Uh, again, let's just use our superpowers and try and wipe as many of these guys out as possible. Right at our heat limit. It was a very solid hit, despite not getting the kill. Um, I might deploy the spider to get the coup de gras instead. Despite the uh, major risk we're taking. How much health is left on this thing? Sorry, I'm checking to see because firing my lasers is going to do... Oh, it, it only takes one hit. I mean, it's our commander, so there's no way we're going to make that one hit. But we're going to shoot for it. Yay! Okay. Uh, pretty satisfying so far. I don't think... This is a long shot no matter what we do. I don't think there's any positioning we can do to get... Uh, that's a straight shot on that tank. Right on the edge of this building. Wow, nice piloting. Uh, this should be a kill. We're going to fire everything, which is very heat inefficient to do, but... We're kind of at the stage of combat where things need to be dying. Okay, um, the Jenner made a very big tactical error, which is to maintain its high ground and not use, not develop any evasion. It's in clear line of sight of all of our mechs, so... We'll try and knock it out with heavy, heavier mechs and kill the Galleon with the Spider unless uh, random uh, RNG Jesus uh, steps in and says no. Which, uh, how, how, how are you going to argue with that? It's Jesus. What I'd like to do is come around like this, mostly just because I know what's going to happen in the future. Okay. Mm, missed with auto cannon five. Probably again. the The general rule is if you're going to shoot with your big guns, you should probably uh, use those precision strikes. But um, but I didn't make that call. We've got enough things to shoot at it. It should die, right? It should die, guys. Turn our lasers off. That's heat neutral. We're probably still going to uh, make a shot with it. Hitting all the wrong parts of this mech. Probably going to be up to Decker with a precision strike. He hasn't been shot yet, not really at least. I can get away with turning the medium laser off. Uh, I think we're just going to shoot as is.
the shot is pretty bad, but we're going to do it with a precision strike. So also don't know how he's physically able to make that shot. I guess there's line of sight. All right, overheat warning. We're going to take that risk. Still didn't kill it. in this direction. I guess we can. I like this line. It's like we need an update and she's like the update is that I'm doing my job. Let loose with an alpha strike, destroyed a jump jet. And they're getting stuff done way more than I wanted. Like I, when that Jenner didn't move last turn, I was like, yeah, we're going to kill you this turn. But it's, uh, it's rogue tech and the dice have spoken. And if you're sitting there screaming, wondering why I'm saving my precision strikes, um, it's because we're about to get into a much bigger fight where, um, in some cases, you can leave with bits of the quick draw and, oh, she got hit, big sad. think letting behemoth do this is the thing to do there you go this is kind of your first real fight in this game and it's when your pilots are all fairly bad and the decisions are not easy. Okay, so we're going to pull back with these units except for Behemoth. Spiders kind of falling apart under pressure, which is what you have to expect. Okay, so um, we're going to reserve and make them come to us. Blow their movement. We should be far enough back. Oh, they're getting a shot in on the Shadow Hawk, which is fine. That's why we left it up there. Wait another second for the quick draw. Quick draw doesn't have much for uh, long range capabilities. What you saw there is pretty much the extent of it. Again, down the road, we'll talk about the quick draw and spend a little bit more time with it. Now we will try to wipe out this shadow hawk and take our time with the quick draw a little bit. So. My poor spider is getting shot up, so I'm not in the biggest wave of my fanny at you move, but we will do our uh, 
use our new target lock superpower. Oops, I overheated myself to make that jump. Not uh, not wise. So, those who saw that uh, and I didn't, you can laugh now. So... I think we'll probably need to jump up here. I would be absolutely floored if Glitch died on this mission by getting shot in the head again. We're going to let that shot kind of determine where we're going to be focusing our fire, but it looks like we're going to be focusing it on the auto cannon, and that does make a lot of sense. Probably want to get Decker more into the fight. Let's see if there's a jump I can make that can give me a direct fire with the PPC. <clears throat> Jumping is better in this game, but it does generate a fair amount of heat. Kind of like that. Can get away with that shot though. Nice shooting, Decker. Yep, even a missile got in there. Probably gonna walk Behemoth up there. It's a risk because uh, the quick draw does have good short range potential. If it's like any other quick draw, it mounts four medium lasers and. Uh, you'll hear me say a lot that any mech that mounts four medium lasers is automatically a good mech, bar none. No argument, it's already a good mech. I was hoping to take out the auto cannon 5 on that play. I think we'll reserve for one turn. and maybe get this auto cannon 5 taken out anyway. And if you're wondering why we saved up all of that uh precision, this would be why. This is this is the moment. Try to neuter our enemies in this fight as much as possible. It looked like a center torso shot, honestly. We'll find out here in a second. This is more aggressive than I wanted to play this, but we really do need stuff to start happening for us. Otherwise, something, something serious is going to break. That's that's the wrong torso entirely that you're shooting at, lady. Wrong torso entirely. I think. Do this four heat jump. Okay, turn the medium laser off. Take our shot. Okay, finally. Uh, let's reserve T until the quick draw makes its play.
Uh, nice that it's shooting at the Vindicator, honestly, because the Vindicator hasn't been shot hardly at all. Okay, here's our boy. He is burning up. He is in massive danger. The question is, are we going to commit him to an attack to hopefully kill the Shadow Hawk? And the answer is, it's our commander in a light mech. Of course we are. It'll be hilarious if the Shadow Hawk gets successfully disarmed and it just like walks up and punches that spider right in the face for doing it. The reality is, is that we barely have the damage to... Uh, prevent getting punched in the face like that's the thing that's going to happen next oh an ammo explosion wow it's crazy luck all right well everyone's pretty happy about that um time to do the scout mech thing and run away well we will reserve for one turn. We'll see how big of a mistake -y that was. So as you can see, your melee attack does 85 damage. It's That's huge damage. Uh, and that's also the the real power of the shadow hawk especially in this early part of the game where it's like uh yeah it's definitely got guns on them and you can definitely use those guns uh until you're close enough to smash the thing and then you should be boxing and boxing is what we're gonna do we're also probably gonna box it in a way that it has to walk around us to get to our other mechs The other thing is um, the quick draw does not want to box with the Shadow Hawk. Not that it's necessarily the worst at it, but it has way more short range weapons to bring to bear. So fighting like that at that range is not not as viable. Uh, it's a center torso shot, which means we're probably just going to erase this thing from existence, which is a real shame. Uh, salvage would is preferable, but... We also want to survive the mission with minimal losses. Uh, moving like that barely matters, but we'll we'll do it. probably gonna take I remember cranking out enough damage that we could theoretically core out this turn I guess we'll go for the shot yeah now what's your play big lady run away what a hero yeah yeah run away that was the plan It's probably time to go all in on an attack. Well, we're not even... Even if we did, we're not going to wipe enough heat to make that work. So we'll get our five movement evasion up and we'll do some more sensor locks. I see you. It looked like 
more than anything, she did not want to get punched by the Shadow Hawk anymore by the way that she moved. But um, but yeah, you're gonna get punched by that Shadow Hawk again. Sorry. Or not? Okay. Hey guys, this is Future Tihashi. Had a little recording interruption. Um, and I'm jumping in to finish out this movie with you guys. As you can see, we're still blasting away at the back of this quick draw, um, trying to grind out one side of it to get a good kill in there. And we will see if, uh, if it can come together for us here pretty much given up hope at this point for any kind of salvage after that first melee hit struck the center torso if it had been a leg or an arm maybe a different story but for right now we're trying to uh teach good old grim civil the error of her ways She takes her shot at the spider, which, I mean, she's got many better choices, but she's pretty awful and has made bad choices up until this point, and uh, her fate is pretty much sealed. Giving it another swing, bat that arm off. eighty five damage is a lot, no matter what. Doesn't matter if it's this game or uh MechWarrior Five Mercenaries either. That's like a big alpha strike in MechWarrior Five Mercenaries as well. Eighty five damage. And that's what the uh, Shadowhawks melee attack does, which just makes it so good, especially compared to the other guns that it carries. And there she's out. Finally, cracked off enough damage to put her on her side. And we're sort of in a tidy place right here, ready to um, board the Argo and get the heck off this planet. Or moon, I think, planetoid. There's a little bit of suspension of disbelief storytelling in here where this, uh, you know, 200 year old cannibalized wreck uh, immediately is space worthy um, and has the structural integrity to fly. Um, the story pays you back for that though, um, as you spend a lot of the rest of the game repairing this uh, piece of junk until it's ready to be decent again. And so, and you do get cool visuals uh, for this part of the game. We'll watch the cutscene here shortly. And we can take a peek at our salvage. So here we go. Um, we had some pilot injuries. Uh, and we did nail uh, one piece of the quick draw. You can get the old thing. In one of my early playthroughs, I got the whole thing out of pure luck. Um, but yeah, we have a chunk of it for right now, and um, so we're going to grab the quick draw, we're going to grab uh, that chunk of Shadowhawk and uh, the Jenner, pretty much the best salvage we can pull out of there, and be happy with the rest. We got the large laser, which is pretty exciting, um, and pretty much nothing else to report there. And uh, for right now, because of our recording interruption, uh, that will pretty much wrap up the movie. We'll watch our cutscene and enjoy our victory a little bit.
the Argo is a great looking ship, great uh, hero ship design. If you are into sci-fi at all and have looked at other hero ships, whether it's the USS Enterprise or um, the Millennium Falcon, if you want to count that. Um, the Argo is awesome. The Argo has everything that it needs to make it a believable, but still uh, weak uh, story component. That is to say, like, um, it's not a battleship. It doesn't even have guns. Um, if it comes under attack, you have to deploy the Leopard to defend it. Um, so it's not winning your fights for you. It's the maypole around which the story revolves, which is perfect. Um, so here's the uh, return of Lady Kamea Arano. Um, you guys could read my conversation choices. Um, our gambit with Lady Centrella pays off, of course, and um, it's revealed that Kamea is behind our decision so far. She's got her tasteful scar on her face to show that she's been through some stuff. Um, and that's, again, uh, good support for her character. And there's there's some, some strong stuff that we'll see, uh, like her assumptions and her adaptability uh, comes through. Like here, she's uh, planning on refitting and taking the Argo herself, which isn't... Um, and of course she wants to use it as a symbol instead of as a, uh, as a more blunt object for winning her war. And so anyway, we're going to, we're going to go through those developments with her. Um, and here she speaks, uh, albeit briefly, it's, it's still poignant. She talks about her time on the frontier because, of course, she grows up on Koromodir, which uh, no matter what, no matter that it's in the periphery, is still a capital world, still a very nice uh, place to live. Um, and so we got, we're going to get a glimpse into her, her thought process now that she's seen um, and had to live amongst frontier people. Um, obviously without her nobility or her heritage or anything like that to fall back on. Um, and yeah, good storytelling. Um, again, it's uh, sort of a shame. I mean, it's, it's done best here because you don't really have a princess character um, as much as you might from the inner sphere. Um, here we go. They're talking about Zathras, where they were hiding out, um, and that it was uh, rough for them, but also a good lesson learned. Um, but yeah, she's not necessarily a princess character as much as you might find in the Inner Sphere because of how the Regan Coalition works. I realize that that's a bit of a technicality, but... This game is full of like little technicalities like that, where it's like uh, it's all like uh, hereditary dictatorships and or monarchies. Um, but that's a pretty core storytelling element of this and many other series. So that's what you get. She's still of the of a lot of the storytelling done in BattleTech. She's still some of the best, and one of the better protagonists, in my opinion. This is depicting the relationship between the Magistracy of Canopus and the role of the Oregon Coalition. Um, geographically, the Oregon Coalition is in between um, the Magistracy and the Torian Concordant. So obviously the role of having a healthy relationship with your buffer state um, can't be ignored by the Canopians. So with this decision making, um, I pretty much, I pretty much go 
double down on joining Kamea's side. Um, usually I t uh, take the middle decision to say, you know, we can do business, uh, more like a mercenary. But since I was a member of her Royal Guard um, in our previous life, it's pretty much we're going to double down and um, us splitting ourselves to her cause um, saves her the trouble of leveraging our debts over us to ensure our complacency, which I like a little bit better for my own character building. And so she's going to side with us, we're going to side with her, and our relationship is going to be amiable from the very start. And once we're uh, fully on her side, she is going to erase our debts, which is the most important aspect of the early game because it frees up your mobility. So that's the end of our debt. Sort of also highlights why whatever you say and do with the banks up until that point is just a tutorial for the most part. It's pretty consequence free. So there's the Centurion. We've got it with us. We'll do refits next time, and we will be talking about the Centurion down the road, how I feel about it. All right, that's it for now, guys, and we'll catch you next time.